Welcome to our first Glass Reflections program. I'm so excited to see all of you here. Um, as we get started, Karen's gonna be hopping on any moment now. Um, but as you all join, feel free to type in the comment section at the bottom of your screen to say hi, where you're joining us from. Um, we love to see where our Glass community is. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi, Karen. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Oh, you look yeah. very nice. I like your little head set up uh, and your earrings. You got all cute. <laughs> <laughs> My hair is growing out, so this is the only solution right now. <laughs> nice. Oh, wow. We have someone from Sweden, Ohio, I saw. Yay. Oh, uh, Hello everyone. So we'll allow just maybe one or two more minutes for folks to trickle in um, since it's pretty much right on the dot for starting. And um, I offer people to enter in in the comments where they're visiting us from to kind of see where the international glass community is, who's awake maybe, since time zones are definitely a thing we consider. Yay, so many waves. Hi, everyone. Mm. All right. So and I don't know if, if I know you've, that you've got questions, but to, I guess if people have questions, I'm happy to answer them if we have time to. Oh, yeah, absolutely. that would be great. Um, so then that being said, let's just go ahead and get started and people can come and go as they please. Um, so hello everyone again, my name is Jenna. I use she, her, hers pronouns and I am the operations and programs manager here at the Glass Art Society. Um, the guest staff knows how challenging this past year has really been, especially for the arts community. And behind the scenes, we have been working really hard to offer a whole new slate of virtual opportunities to bring our glass community together. So enter in our very first glass reflections and this new program every Thursday, I will go live to interview artists, businesses, um, educators or other glass enthusiasts to hear about how they see glass as a vehicle for self care and what tools they might use to manage their stress of their careers, especially given that this year has been more stressful than we can probably look at past historical events. Um, we'll also spend the majority of the time hearing from our guests and about their practice. And then we might have a short activity at the end, either trying out a different practice or exercise, or maybe just answering questions from the audience. So then, without further ado, um, I would like to introduce for our very first Glass Reflections, Karen Donnellan, who we are beyond thrilled to be speaking with you. Um, born in Ireland and currently based in New York, Karen's art practice includes sculpture, installation, sound, video, and performance. Currently, Karen is um, the Associate Professor of Glass and the Director of the National Casting Center Glass Facility at the New York State College of Ceramics at Alfred University in New York. So that was just a very brief introduction. Um, but then Karen, is there anything else you would like to introduce yourself and give background for our audience here today? Um, I think I think that mostly covers it. Um, I use she, her pronouns as well. Awesome, yeah. great. Um, so then I'm particularly interested in your background, both on your website you indicate, as well as on your Instagram account, that you are an energy worker, amongst also being an artist and an educator. Could you maybe elaborate on what that means? Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm trained in um, Reiki and a couple of other energy healing modalities. They're like hands-on energy healing, although you can also do distance healing with them. Um, mm -hmm. And so I'm a Reiki master, I have um, a Sikkim master, and also I work with, um, uh, magnetic uh oh my god i'm <laughs> um it's just called magnetic healing as well which is oh. another, just another so i tend to like mix them when i'm working on people um, oh. and i use them every day too for myself as well 
Oh, really? Is there one out of those that you tend to gravitate more towards? Um, well, Reiki is sort of like the, my, the first thing that I trained in and Reiki is earth energy. Um, that, that's sort of like what you're like channeling when you're healing. And Sakim um, includes earth, water, wind and fire energy. Um, so I do like I do like Sakim because it depending on what you're trying to maybe clear or heal, you've got more tools to work with. Um, whereas Reiki is like a super grounding energy. And then Sakim, like I might use the fire energy to like clear out some, you know, junk energy. Or like I might use, uh, say like, it's called Sofael, but it's basically water, like water energy to heal like emotional things. Oh, interesting. So, so where did you learn all these different techniques and practices? How did you get into this? um so well my mom my mom went for energy healing when I was a kid and that really helped her she was going to have like back surgery and um, and as a last resort she tried you know because they didn't even know what was wrong with her and she tried that and she ended up learning it and I, she brought me for energy healing too because I had developed epilepsy um, and it really helped reduce my seizures and stuff and then um so mom used to practice she got trained in it she used to practice on us as teenagers and everything and then when I went to college I had an opportunity to get Reiki, which is not what my mom practiced. Um, but I ended up going like as often as I could. And then I eventually learned it and trained in it with the mom of the, of the person who used to heal me at, at, while I was in college. Um, and so Jan Call is her name. She's based in Dublin. And I've pretty much done all my trainings with her. She's been, she's been amazing. So she's sort of been like my mentor for years. I yeah. love that. And from what I've gathered of especially in traditional or, or alternative forms of healing. There's a lot of that mentorship that I often see maybe not as prevalent in a kind of Western way. So that's lovely that you still have that relationship with them. Yeah. Yeah. And whenever I go home to Dublin, I try and have a, have a session with her too. Yeah. Nice. So then steering a little bit back to your art practice, um, so in terms of Reiki and using these other types of modalities, how can you maybe explain what that means for influencing your work, especially with the frame of glass art? Yeah, um, well, one thing is that like, uh, you know, I'm one person, I'm one human being, I happen to have like, do multiple things. Um, but I am interested in how like, my healing practice overlaps with my art practice. And I think ultimately it's hard to say it in a way that doesn't sound really trite, but like I want my work to, um, to be healing on some level or, you know, that, it, that it's like beneficial and cathartic, um, even on a very subtle level. Um, and I feel like they are aligning, the, you know, the more, I, the more I work, the more I'm not, um, you know, there's been over the years, like a lot of advice to like, to kind of hide that part of my practice or, Oh, Do you know to be cautious about it but I feel like we're also at a moment on the planet where everybody's like healing tell me what have you got like we need everything we can get right now and mm -hmm. and so maybe it's a moment for work that deals with that I would completely agree and what I've started noticing in the museum sector is a lot of art museums are tapping into what are other types of programs, other in person or especially virtual, where we can kind of engage in art, slow looking at it and trying to get some of that therapeutic kind of calming and grounding aspect. Yeah, and also, yeah, and community as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then within taking that inspiration into your artwork, are there other types of themes or messages that you try to convey? Yeah, um, and actually, I wanted to t just to also say, like, specifically with glass, like, I think about glass as it relates to water, and I'm also a Cancer Sun, which is a water sign. Um, but, like, I think about how, how water absorbs intentions and words, and so, like, it makes sense that glass, especially in a liquid state, would, do, would be similar. And even the way that when you mark glass, when it's hot, you know, like, it scars, like, it remembers. Um, and something that I usually talk about is like Dr. Emoto's research where he, he, he died a couple of years ago, but the whole premise was that water absorbs intentions and words. And uh, the way that he like was trying to prove it was uh, you, like with water molecules and exposing them to like a word or an intention. 
and then immediately freezing them. And the, the particles that were like were exposed to say the word love ended up being like really gorgeous, symmetrical little like snowflake shapes. And the ones that were made from maybe polluted water or had the word hate or something like that ended up being really um, just weird blobby shapes that were, you know, that weren't symmetrical and kind of gross looking. What, who did you say did this? Um, Ma Dr. Masaru Emoto, he's Japanese. Interesting. Um, I, I, I think his, I think his website is something like the wa like Water Peace Project. Mm. But also, if you e e M O T O, if you have a Google, he's mm -hmm. on. Yeah. Oh yes, I am a big fan of Google, so yep. I will be doing that shortly yep. today. <laughs> and sorry, do, can you run the last question by me again? Oh yeah, so just exactly as you were just explaining now in terms of maybe other messages or themes that you tie into your glass art, maybe as it relates to um, your practice in Reiki or healing or maybe how you just create art and what that experience is like. Um, that's a big question. I, um, I mean, I guess, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I, I, um, I'm really interested in sacred geometry and like the, the psychological effect it has on us, like, you know, using the circle, which is a symbol generally as like of the divine feminine, but also, you know, the planets, the sun, like, um, you know, uh, sort of like m micro macro, like the universe, um, no beginning and no end, etc. cetera. Um, and, but also the circle psychologically is a really like a uh, soothing shape to look at. Um, so that so that's like one tool thinking about geometry and also like the torus so like the torus shape as in sort of like a, basically like a donut shape that pretty much the whole you can model the whole universe on like a torus that's that you know like if you think about a black hole everything is like sucked in and it, it, it's going to come out the other side but like energetically humans are a torus too that it it comes up it comes up the middle up and out and if you look at an apple or a tomato the cross section has this like torus shape as well mm -hmm. or yeah. even like a tree it comes up the roots up the trunk and then out into the leaves mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now i'm just picturing all of those objects <laughs> yeah and then yeah if you like the cross section of that is always a circle like everything comes back to a circle mm -hmm. uh, so i guess like yeah that that's how you know it might not always be super evident that about the energy work but mm -hmm. the but geometry is one way like that i think and also using crystals and you know, and I think, and also, I guess, like, to me, glass is like, ideally, maybe I'd like to be just working with like rose quartz, <laughs> or like amethyst or something. Um, and like glass is, you know, you can manipulate it, it's accessible to, to a degree anyway. Um, and reminds me or like, you know, reminds me of those materials and like has that energetic quality. Mm -hmm. So that being said, are there any projects you're working on right now? uh yeah not not so much not so much glass right now um i'm working on um a signed project with the artist nusheen rostrami who's based in new york and so she's work she's doing the video element and i'm like kind of sculpting sound around it um there's that and another collaboration with suzanne peck with the blow harder we just developed we just did a new made a new poster which we haven't put out yet but um that will be coming soon and it's a, a kind of sexy lexicon for the hotshots <laughs> um and what else and then I'm, i've been working on an artist book too um oh. and that's kind of almost ready i'm working on, with the designer alana Sch Schlen schlenker um mm -hmm. uh so she's sort of I, i've like it, there are these tuning forks these tuning fork illustrations and this project has been going on for a while like I drew did these drawings I think in maybe like 2016 and for lots of different reasons it's just like you know it's finally coming around now fingers crossed and so I'm hoping that that will be a thing um and I'm, I'm planning to do like a short edition of five with glass covers I want to do like iridescent mm -hmm. glass covers nice. and then maybe an open edition that are like that's more like maybe smaller, like more affordable. And, mm -hmm. yeah. Lovely. So we did just get a question. I'm going to check to see if it's related to what you just talked about. Um, so from Lauren, she asks, how does glass as a medium represent different energies? 
how can we manipulate glass to heal in different ways or create different energies? Um, well, I think about it like, it, you know, like maybe like iron is like a really grounded earth energy. Mm -hmm. Like if you think about even like the chakras, like your root is red and it's sort of about stability and, um, you know, like support and money and like the physical, like, you know, and then, and then as we go up like this, or at least this is how I think about it, like glass, A, it's transparent, like you can see through it. Plus it's sort of magic the way that it can be transformed. Like I think about when you drop glass in into water and you get all those like squiggly tails yes. and it's like flexible, like it's, it's such an unbelievably dynamic material that it can just, you know, um, shape shift. Mm -hmm. um, so I think about that as like, you know, in terms of alchemy and transformation, but, but also the ethereal that like, if we think about the crown chakra and that sort of energy, that's sort of like connected to the universe or source energy that mm -hmm. to me anyway, glass is like the closest thing, like, you know, crystals like selenite can do that too. But the glass is like a material that we're able to like work with, or we have a system for working with it. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing with healing and energy, I mean, I feel like the work that you, the energy that you put into the work mm -hmm. no, is what's going to come out the other side, no matter what your material is, or at least that's how I operate or I try to that. Like, I think about what, what's, what's actually going into the, into the process and into, yeah, into the making and, and the intention behind the work too. Mm -hmm. Definitely. But, sorry. Oh yeah, I just definitely was what I was saying. Processing your words and then trying to visualize some of the pieces that you've made. Like on a, yeah, like on a subtle level, I think then that those energies are like mm -hmm. absorbed by people, you know, maybe. Mm -hmm. anyway. I have another question. So then in relation to all of this, how do you integrate your own self-care into your glass practice? I know we've talked a little bit of either maybe in the design phase or in the actual creation, but are there other parts within your glass practice that you kind of integrate your version of self-care? Um, I mean, it's a, it's like a constant thing anyway, like do it like energetic hygiene, you know, uh, where I, where I do different practices like every morning and evening and sign stuff. So I'm not, I'm trying to think how it like directly relates to, my glass practice and I will say too because I tend to I'm working with sound and the projects tend to take different forms that my glass practice isn't necessarily like like I'm not necessarily um uh I'm not necessarily like blowing glass or casting glass every week mm -hmm. you know that it's like it depends where I'm at and what needs to happen um sorry yeah uh self-care and glass. I mean certainly when it comes to teaching I think about that a lot and how like the old way of working was to like grind, grind, grind. And it's like such a capitalist way of working. Um, and I have no time for it. I'm not, I, we have one body and we should take care of it. Um, and I have no time for like hurting your own, hurting your body to make the work like that. that sorry. That like, you know, sort of like martyrdom for your practice. I, mm -hmm. I've no, I, that's not my thing. Um, <laughs> that it should be aligned, that it should feel good. And, and I guess that's another thing is like align alignment over action that you mm -hmm. that you make or you do or you practice or pursue when it's it feels like it's in alignment that you, you don't necessarily I mean there's discipline but there's also not feeling like it's a chore or you have to yes. work like a machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I remember having various conversations with some artists about how at least in this current society, the climate is you just work and work. And even though it's your passion, you can easily burn out. And then yeah. there's kind of a dichotomy between, well, I want to do this, but then it just takes so much energy that the joy that I get out of it slowly slips away. And then that even yeah. can feed into your physical body and, you know, having to be in certain positions or postures for long periods of time over years really affect the way that you yeah. just interact in the world yeah totally um so i love hearing all about at least your art practice and you as an artist but you started to touch on and i would really love to hear about you as an educator 
maybe how you convey these topics or how to take care of yourself as an artist to your students. Can you maybe speak a little yeah. on that? Well, um, sorry. Uh, I mean, th this year, I feel like in the context of everything, it's forced us to like slow down. And so, and also at Alfred, like, because we're trying to be careful about like physical distancing and everything, there's like new protocols and they have to sign up for studios. So like there is, there is probably, I mean, you could have oodles of hours still in the studios if you really wanted, but it's, it's, it's having, you know, students need to be more conscientious about, okay, what time, what hours do I need this week? Which studio am I going to use? And so it, it's good that it's more like kind of thoughtful that you're not just necessarily a studio rat and like, I'll sleep when I'm dead attitude. Mm -hmm. Do you know that, that you're like, you're planning and hopefully it's like slow and steady runs the race. Um, I also like, have talked to the students like about about like mental health days that some days it, you know we're also taking on the collective stress and the collective anxiety of like certainly in the states um but also like globally um and so you know i think that we're 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 dealing with our own personal stuff and the collective like upheaval um and so there are times when we need to bloody break um and i i've also been because there's a possibility too that like if if we if people start getting sick and stuff we may go online so i've been encouraging the students to like make and we've had a lot of work days um and also that the students are pursuing what they're excited about and being less less prescriptive with like assignments and more like what is what's the thing that lights you up um and what's what what are you most excited about because that's what's going to be most sustainable for you the thing that you love is the thing that you've probably been practicing for lifetimes and it's what i mean the experimentation and like discovery like I want to learn from what they discover mm -hmm. like you know when a student's like I don't know can I do this and I'm like I don't know can you like <laughs> as long as you know uh, as long as you're safe or whatever um I love like yeah the discovery the experimentation the hands-on making and like the sharing and community like supportive of like sharing those discoveries so mm -hmm. sorry that's a bit of a babble but does that answer the question yeah that was fantastic i'm especially interested in those mental health days and what how the students kind of receive that information do they think that are let me pause do you have you noticed that they are receptive to maybe thinking of their practice in a slightly different way given these different tools or resources that talk about mental health I, I mean, I hope so. I mean, I suppose for some of them, it might be the first time they've ever had this conversation or thought about their practice that way, you know? Um, so, but, but you know, because other classes are, are on the grind and they're okay. like really challenging and pushing them. Okay. Um, so who, who knows? That's how I'm, that's how I'm rolling with it. Okay. Um, and I've also said to them like, you know, you need to choose, you have to opt into your challenges like if I said an assignment, you have to decide what what's the level that you're aiming for or what's outside of your comfort zone that you feel like you can handle, especially this semester. And um, that, you know, that challenge is going to be satisfying and that's where you're going to learn the most. Um, but I'm also, as an educator, I'm happier as a cheerleader than being like a nag. I'm not going to like be a, I'm gonna, not going to police anybody for, okay. you know, that it's like, it's also... I mean, as an artist, once you, but certainly once you leave a, academia, no one's going to be breathing down your neck and maybe no one cares whether you make art today or not. Um, so like, how do you, how do you self-start self and, and also developing, developing their own voice early on, you know, that, that they're sure of themselves. I think it's also from my experience of, of my ideas being questioned a lot to the point where, where I still have a lot of self-doubt with my ideas and I don't want to I don't want to be contri I don't want to be adding to their self-doubt I think that's really powerful just acknowledging that not only internally but externally so I appreciate for you sharing especially something kind of vulnerable when it comes to talking about your own self-efficacy or confidence I think especially in the states and maybe some other western countries that can be a little bit of a difficult or uneasy conversation mm -hmm. yeah um, so then 
lastly, we're getting a little bit towards the end of today's first program. Um, but I was curious if maybe you would explain one of either a practice or an exercise you do, whether it's for teaching or for your art practice that maybe helps you slow down and kind of recenter yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, a couple of things. One is like, we're all going around in our heads a lot, you know, that we're like floating brains and we forget we have a body. Mm -hmm. Um, so one thing that I do when I find myself like anxiety or I'm getting ahead of myself or like, I'm not like just pausing for a second to just like think, um, is to actually just like put my hands on my knees or my toes and remind myself that I have legs and feet, <laughs> you know? Um, and also like if you have access to hugging a tree or sitting on the grass, um, you know, or even just get, being barefoot on, on grass or the earth, if you can, um, or like if you've plants to like go like connect with your plants or your pet and all of those things, like super simple, um, just to pause. And then in terms of breathing exercises, maybe I'll just describe it. And then we, if you want to do it with me, we can. Yeah, I would love to. Let's do it. Um, so it's, I mean, it's super simple, really just, um, so taking a breath in like, you know, maybe three seconds or something, imagining that you're breathing in love or God X, God, Goddess, universe, source, prana, chi, whatever you want, whatever, whatever you're choosing or like ease and grace and peace. Yeah. So breathing that in, imagining it breathing in, like right down to your tips, your fingers, your toes, mm -hmm. in your whole energy and aura and holding it for maybe a couple of seconds if you can, and then breathing out. And as you're breathing out, imagine you're breathing out any like anxiety, stress. If you like to visualize, to maybe visualize it as like maybe gray energy or whatever that you're just like breathing it out into the, up to the sky or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful visualization. I'm ready. I okay. would love to do this with you. And anyone in the audience, feel free to join us. We can't see you, but in spirit, we will. Okay. So, so taking a deep breath in, the deepest one you've taken all day. Two, three. Hold it for a couple of seconds. So you're breathing in love, chi, prana, and then breathing out through your mouth, maybe. Exhaling any anxiety, stress pushing it all out, imagining it releasing from your toes as well. And breathing in again, breathing in love, holding it for a couple of seconds, imagine it getting into your, right into your cells and your DNA, and then exhaling all the way out, pushing out any stress, disease, anything, or any pain. And breathing in again, holding it, anchoring into your DNA and your cells, and then pushing out any anxiety. And see how you feel. Also nice to um, rate, rate your anxiety before you start and then rate it again when you're done. Because even that like will just like, before you send the email or before you, <laughs> you know, uh, pick up the phone or whatever. Yeah. Wow, that felt really good. I especially felt it in my toes, surprisingly, which is an interesting nice, good. Um, But I hold a lot of anxiety. In, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. I hold a lot of anxiety in my stomach, so that like tends mm -hmm. to like. It also helps me get to sleep, you know. Anyway. Oh, interesting. I can see that helping me just like release and then lay down. Yeah, and actually physically feeling like it's out of your body now. Mm -hmm. yeah. lovely well thank you for leading us through that um does anyone have in the audience any questions for karen before we wrap up for today you can either put it in the question or a comment we're always curious and, what you think and also like my dms are open if people have questions or um and, yeah. Perfect. And that is a great reminder. Um, so it was so great to hear from you about um, being an educator in the class community and how you employ self-care and healing. Um, this program will be uploaded to our GAS platform soon. So for those who maybe weren't able to join us, there will be an opportunity later. 
And Karen's information will be available if anyone has any questions they want to reach out directly. Um, that'll be available to everyone. And thank you so much for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you all next month. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. And thanks, everybody, for joining. I really appreciate it. Lots of love. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.